So um, this one is not that hard, but you got to, in order to get the right answer, you got to just kind of think a little bit. So what's the first thing I do? Well, I'm going to read the question. The question says, two motorcycles approach each other on the same road. One has a constant velocity of 22 meters per second. The other one has a negative velocity of 10 meters per second. So I'm going to, this is my motorcycle. No, no shout outs. This is my motorcycle, and then this is this is the other motorcycle. This one's going fast. So this one has a velocity of 10 meters per second in the negative direction. This one has a velocity. Oh, this one doesn't have a person. This is like a, an autonomous motorcycle. This one is 22 meters per second, and the distance apart. Um, is delta x is equal to 480 meters apart. Thank you for getting that. So now the total distance between them, I don't know, but they're going to meet in the middle. So they want to know how long would it be before they meet each other. I don't know where it is. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. I don't know, but I know they're 480 meters apart. So my distance traveled by the first motorcycle plus the distance traveled by the second motorcycle has to be a total of 840 meters. Okay. Okay, question six. So then what we need to do is we need to figure out how do I, the time will be the same. So whatever time this one has, this one has. So remember that the distance that they travel is equal to the velocity times time. Right? And then we, we're used to seeing it more like this. We would say something along the lines of like delta x times t. I don't want to use delta x because really we have d1 and d2 and they're, they're going to add up to delta x. Okay? So I'm going to say that their total, one, an easy way to do it would be, and the, the big question, the big debate they were having in the back is, is the velocity negative or positive, right? And so there's a couple of ways to do this problem. If I think of it, You could do this problem in a way where you would say V sub X for 1, V sub 1 X times T plus V sub X 2 times T will equal 480 meters. But that isn't really what it's going to equal together right? Because if you go to do the math, one of these will have a positive number and one of these will have a negative number. Really, what we're finding is it's going to have to be the absolute value of D2, right? So if I, if I call this distance D1 and I call this distance D2, this distance is in the negative direction, okay? And so the easiest thing for me to do is say plus the absolute value of the second one. So then what do I have? I have 22 times T plus, uh, or actually, yeah, we could do it this way. Well, let me back up for a second. I, got, I just realized there's some algebra stuff that I need to think about. I don't really need... I need this to be a positive value, but I can make it a positive value by making this velocity positive. So I'm going to have the absolute value of negative 10 
all right, times T equals 480. So then I have 22T plus 10T equals 480. This is 33T, or 32T, sorry. And so what's the final time? So we have to, yeah, we have to find the 15 seconds. We have to find the angle. And the justify making that positive is because it doesn't matter. It's the same distance. In other words, if I let this motorcycle go for 15 seconds and then I let this motorcycle go the same distance, that total would be 480 meters. There is an easier way to do it where you put in the negative and stuff, but that's kind of complicated. We have to introduce some more algebra. We'd have to say um, the other workaround would be is that you would take and subtract um, the D2 from over here. Then you have a negative of the negative, and then you calculate that. But then it makes it hard to find the time. So there's that. <laughs> Okay, so that's 